Hello, everyone. You're listening to the I Go With Ego podcast, bringing you guests with first-hand experience in studying abroad and seizing personalities excelling in the workforce. Now presenting your host, Ego Kelly Ekakite. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the I Go With Ego podcast. It's uh, such an exciting time to be with my two wonderful friends, my two amazing friends, uh, Pam and Udu. Uh, I've been fortunate to have known them for a few uh, years now. So, uh, Pam and Udu, welcome to the I Go With Ego podcast. Thank you. Thank you Thank for, you for having me. Thank you for having yeah, me. Happy to be here. Absolutely. It's good to see you guys. It's good to see your faces. It's been a while. Yeah. Likewise. Likewise. Yeah. So before we get started, and before you introduce yourself to my mm-hmm. audience, you guys are both in Minneapolis, I, I believe, so Minnesota as a whole, and you guys have seen the before and the after of the whole George Floyd thingy. And today was a good day, not just for Black people, not just for African Americans, but for humanity as a whole. So what do you guys think about today's judgment? I'll let, I'll let Pam go first. Oh, okay. <laughs> um... <laughs> I don't know if I should speak a lot about this whole thing um, since I don't come from a certain background, Um, but um, it's definitely, um, I'm I'm happy to see that the justice or the accountability serve, that people are happy with the results, that there's no more violent, but um, this is just a start. There's so many other things that needs to be um voiced of or talked about um but this this should be like a great start for just everybody all over the country not just the united states the whole world um for people who feel discriminated um people of color the racism yeah. um i think it's it's a great day um for just anybody to um talk about these things i agree Udu, what do you think yeah no i'm all definitely covered a lot of it I just think there was a there was a great relief for people of color like myself and just seeing how cases have been handled in the past compared to now. Um, many people doubted that the, there will be justice because it's been a, a a same thing that happens every year for the past years that we we never get justice for things like that mm-hmm. and. Minneapolis has been going crazy for sure. <laughs> yeah. And, and they, they were really like ready to, you know, protest again tonight and really do a lot of things because everybody's hurt so bad. Um, but it was just great to see that justice was served and it was quite vivid. Everybody saw it in the camera, like what this guy did. And when I watched that video first, the thing that came to my mind was this, is, this could have been me too true like i don't know like it it was just hurting so the fact that justice justice was served today is just like a big relief to everybody you know so we're thankful for that Uh, hopefully hopefully that that leads to um a better insight for for like you know the justice system and justice reform and everything like that so we'll see yeah, I, I, I agree totally. And we hope that to see the Judge, Judge Floyd Justice Act pass in the, in the, in the Senate and, and the House. And hopefully mm-hmm. things will become better for everybody, not just Black people, for uh, Indian Americans, everybody from anywhere you are in the world. And we hope to have better days ahead of us. And I think it's going to happen because as the generations come, become younger, become even more yeah. diverse and become uh, you know, inclusive in, in nature, exactly. things get better. Well, it's still good to have you guys here. Before I before we dive into the questions, uh, my audience would like to get to know you, want to know who you are, and if you want to tell us something exciting about you. I'll start with Udu this time. Something exciting? Okay, well, let me start. My name is Udu of Wrighty. Um, I came to the United States for studies, and I came to study electrical engineering in Minnesota State University. I've been here for about seven years now. Um, something exciting about me... Um, I, well, after graduating, I became an engineer Mm -hmm. as should be. And I also, um, very inclined with music as well. So I play about five instruments. Okay. Okay. That's that's true enough, but it's okay. (laughs) okay. I'll I'll, I'll take it. (laughs) So, so Pam, tell us about you, please. Um, my name is Pamal and I come from Sri Lanka. Uh, It's been about 
six, um, about seven years um, since I've been here. I finished my undergrad here and then my master's in Minnesota State University, Maine Cato. Yeah. Um, graduated in December. Um, so it's been a couple of months since I started working as a full time and just getting used to this whole adult life. Right. Apart from college, um, it's been exciting, also a little bit overwhelming to figure things out, um, but it's it's going great so far. Cool. Something exciting about me, okay, I don't do any music or any instrument. <laughs> I really like to dance and um, I do traditional dance and uh, things like that. So, yeah. Nice. Well, what do you see? I'll, I'll go take dance classes now. That's <laughs> awesome. Oh, yeah. Well, well, thank you guys once more. And um, Leaving home, coming to a new country is also it's always very tasking. It's it's uh, it's a big deal for us to leave our countries and come to a new place. Most mm-hmm. times, not knowing anybody. Most times, having just few friends around. So, how was first of all, how was life back home in your own country compared to the life you've you've had so far in America? If Pam, if you want to go first. Yeah, um, life back home is was very different from America. Um, I do come from a culture, like a background, a place where we, um, our family is everything. Um, even though we grow up like 30, 40 years, if our mom and dad say something, you, you <laughs> listen, like that's how our culture is. Um, I know it's a little different here. Um, when you turn 16, 18, um, you just go out of the house, you're independent. So I was... I was not that independent person back home. So I always had my mom um, supporting me, everything. She still supports, but here, when you come here, you take um, everything. I mean, you have to decide what you're gonna eat, what you're gonna cook, where you're gonna live. Um, Even like every decision you have to make yourself. So it's a whole, it was just a 180 degrees. Like it was a whole different world for me when I came here Um, since, yeah probably because of a cultural background I had back home. So it was very different. And I was culturally shocked when I first came here, struggled a little bit to adopt and adjust um, to things here. But yeah, it's been great. You learn every every day, you learn new things, you experience new things. So um, once you've had that experience, you just learn better, grow better. Um, you learn to adopt and adjust, so. Yeah, I believe learning is a part of life. So we learn every day, we grow every day. Yeah. Good points. Udu, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I think back home in Nigeria, I I was very dependent on my parents, just like how Pamal said. Um, I think there's the culture is there was there was a lot of culture shock coming over here in America. Uh, there's there's a whole list I could stop mentioning, <laughs> <laughs> but um. Just to say, I wouldn't say there was so much difference in terms of, for me, I, I was a t- well, I was, when I was a teenager in Nigeria, the only difference I see was more of um, how people communicate with each other. It's different from back home to compared to America. And yeah, I just think um, I was a little, a, a lot dependent back home. When I came here, I had to, you know, fend for myself ask questions fail by myself and 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 so yeah i think that's pretty much it no cool you know like i said before i know that the your culture pam and udu's culture is almost the same thing Mm -hmm. because we we believe in the family virtues that even when you're 30 or 40 you can't still say some words to your parents they'll still spank you at that age and and it's it's much different from the culture we have here and it's uh just a blessing to be able to learn new cultures and intertwine with your own culture to make your life a better place and that and that's what's up that's what i agree that's what's up yeah all right so tell us about your life in the university uh, I believe you guys are graduated now from university, both of you. And um, mm-hmm. what was or, or what is education like? Or what is, what does it mean to you? Um, who's gonna go first? <laughs> well, I, I can go. Okay, Udu can go. Okay, so. yeah, I can go. Uh, life in the university—that's a very broad topic. Um, I think, <laughs> I think, uh, just to, I think the university first of all has a whole lot of opportunity for you and it kind of takes you to do the work to 
get those resources to be able to advance in that career that you're trying to go push for. Um, a university in America connects you to the whole world. We have everybody coming to the United States and you get to, well, the university I attended, I got to see different cultures like yeah. from Asia, from that I wouldn't have experienced if I studied in my home country. And, you know, you get to hear people's perspective. You get to, you get to change those biases you have in your head. You get to, you know, understand that many things that you thought was wrong when you actually see people and communicate with them in person. So I think the university is great. Education, you said, what was the question on education again? What does education mean to you? Oh, education means a lot to me. Coming from an African home, <laughs> my parents will always tell me, education is key like so but what what I would say about education because I come in here my perspective changed a little bit um I know I've had friends who didn't even go through education and they're doing good but it's hard um education for me is a system where you can be able to focus and study um through the system and grow your career without distractions to be able to achieve a goal you want to achieve and of course, that's why many companies or occupations will want you to have a certificate from education because they know that you put your 100% into that system um, rather than not going to true education and just um, through a college and just studying on your own, you could have other things that distract you and things like that. So I think education is really important. Um, that's, that's how I see it, yep. Well, cool, thank you. Oh, please. Yeah, um, so I know like everybody around the world knows America as the land of opportunities and everybody who's from a different country um, as a student comes to this country with so much hope, so much, uh, with so much like expectations. And when you come here, um, I, I know, um, take talking from my experience, I actually did struggle a lot to, because um, my mother tongue is not English. Um, I speak a different language back home. Um, obviously, I knew English and how to speak and how to write, but um, this country, you can't be speaking your own language to communicate with others. So I had to um, literally just um, adapt to this whole English um, writing and um, every subject and everything was English and whole, um, I did high school back home, but it was all like paper. Um, there was nothing online. Now th this whole system is online. You do quizzes and assignments, midterms, finals, um, and you have classes every day. It was like a whole new thing for me, but um, obviously there was orientation for like two, three days, but um, it did help, but it took me a while to actually get um, adjusted to this whole new system of education. Um, I really hope anybody who is coming to US for their education should know a little bit about how the education system here works. But like right now, everywhere in the world, everything is online. So now things are different, but mm -hmm. uh, back home things weren't the same. Um, and about education, um, like Udu says, it, it means a lot to me too. Um, like when growing up and your parents always say education is where you can get a future yeah. um a, a great career but also when you come here you see people like very successful people who weren't really college uh, graduates or who weren't really high school graduates they were um, very creative and very um like ambitious and they reached their goals so it's it works both ways but if you're coming from a country um, as a student here um, to get your degree or undergraduate or master's, um, yeah, education means a lot as well. I hope yeah. I answered your question. Yeah, you did. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I agree. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the reason why I started the podcast in the first place, to have guests like you, you know, share your ideas and your experiences so that um, prospective students that want to come to America can hear, yeah. oh, we listen to Pam and the dude, they said this and that and that, and we want to reach out to them for more help, and that's why we do this, so to be a, yeah. uh, a, a, a link on the bridge to, for us help for people that want to come here, and yeah. also for Americans to know what we go through as international yeah. students here. Yeah, definitely. I would also like to add where um, 
there's like orientation and things like that. There's so many resources, even like every school has so many resource centers, so many people that you can ask questions from. Um, I was a little afraid to ask questions at first. I didn't know how they would think of, would I offend anybody? Yeah. Am I disturbing anybody? So I didn't really know if I should be asking so many questions like that, but I wish I did. Uh, but for anybody who's expecting uh, to come here, I think they should like ask a lot of questions. like just know that what resources are available and get used, um, just use them as best as you could. Um, and that's gonna help you for a long time. So they should okay. totally use those resources available in every school. Yeah, thank you so much. Now, okay. international students worry most times about biases, you know, in terms of the skin color, the way they sound, or even getting jobs. Have you guys faced any personally? And if you have, have you uh, managed to to um, fend those biases up and keep pushing to be the best of you? Yeah. I, you want to go? <laughs> you can go first. <laughs> um, I think for me, coming into America, I, there was this bias, first of all, that I had to identify with being Black. I Coming from Nigeria, I never knew anything that, like me being Black until I came here um so that one I had to be part of um also there is this um there's some kind of stereotype about I've been coming from Africa where I've had questions like um do you guys have schools do you have buildings do you have all this all those questions you know the typical questions <laughs> but I don't get offended with those I just yeah. educate them because I know it's coming out of a place of you know like ignorance or they they've been mis you know, misinformed and all I do is pretty much just inform them. And and when they get to talk to me, they be they they are, your English is pretty good right. for <laughs> for a person from Nigeria. I'm like, okay, um, <laughs> let me educate you again. Nigeria <laughs> is a place we speak English and things like right. that. Um so those those kind of biases can really turn you off negatively. But I me being the kind of person that I am, I'm very positive and I like to I could educate people and tell them, this is what it is. This is not what it is. Show them visual, let them see. And that's something that, you know, like we create events like African Student Association created like a like an African, um, you know, like an event where people can come and see what's happening in Africa. And then they just be like, wow, I never knew this was happening. Yeah. Just educating people. Um, so that's that's one of the ways we I treat try to treat biases and things like that and it's worked for me so nice yep. nice yeah so for me uh the bias um i didn't really know a lot about um the West western culture like this um americans how um they react to people who are not um same skin as them or same color as them um coming here first like um everybody would like ask me oh are you from india are you from india and when i say i'm from sri lanka oh where is that like where, where is that country i've never heard of it so i like would have said i had to always like oh sri lanka is uh, also a different country it's closer to india we have the same skin but it's totally different cultures, totally yeah. different um, languages and everything about those two countries are different. So um, I had to be vocal about everything. Also, like I felt like I was representing my country for just anybody who didn't know my country. And when I first met Udu too, I don't think you knew um, where Sri Lanka was and anything uh, no about the country or anything like that. So yeah. I was always proud to just like, yeah, I'm Sri Lankan. This is my country. This is what we do. This is what we speak. Um, but at the same time, it could be a little frustrating too when everybody doesn't know where you come from. At the same time, you have to be understanding because there's some people that who's never even heard or who's never even seen a pe person um, who's a different skin color, who's a different culture. So you have to always be a little understanding of other people too. Um, there are some other, some people who has never even been out of the state, Minnesota. Um, so it, it, it's a lot of things to just um, realize and understand. But overall, it was, um, it was a great experience just like representing your, in your country but in terms of getting jobs um i know you always hear things oh you're not when you're not american when you're not um from this country it's always hard 
um, it has been hard. We have to always like work harder and um, answer questions like, oh, you're not a citizen or you're not from this country or you don't have green card and things like that. It could be frustrating. And um, I think we both have lost opportunities due to not being from this country. But at the same time, um, on the positive side, we have yeah. we still have gotten opportunities regardless of um, what country we're from or what culture or what skin color. So I'm grateful for that um, and grateful for the opportunities we've lost and we learned from it and just it was just motivating me more. OK, yeah, I'm going to do better. I'm going to apply for more jobs. I'm going to look for places that appreciates diversity, that appreciates people from other countries. So. Yeah things like that um it's a it's a lot to talk about or it's a lot to like understand and experience um but as we go like you're not gonna just learn everything in just one day True. it's it's a process you can't just learn everything in one week so it's like a whole process that you learn things every day every day as you go eventually yeah i think i think like biases will always be everywhere True. Yeah. and and it's just one of those things where if you're coming to america you always have to have a, a an open mind yeah. you have to be able to vocalize your opinions you have to be able to know what you're saying mm -hmm. be careful of what you say True. and um you just need to be able to not be so aggressive in how people think what people think about you because um, one of the things I realize is people will always have opinions about you until mm -hmm. they get to speak to you. Mm -hmm. And once you're able to connect on that level, you can be able to now like, they can now be able to be accustomed to what you are. And then you can now continue to go on that flow. So like, don't, cause I know some Nigerians or for example, um, if somebody says something to them or like, if they say, oh, do you have, um, cars in your country and things like they could get very aggressive and angry and you never know that person you're getting angry towards could could just be coming from an ignorant place and Ooh, yeah. it could actually be the person that will even lead you to somewhere else in, to the top so mm -hmm. if you just cancel that person then you've just lost an opportunity because of true you know so people just have to have an open mind but yeah yeah well, I, I agree. And for me, I see it as, a, as an opportunity to teach people about my culture. You ask mm -hmm. me if we, have, if we have houses in Nigeria. Okay, I will show you YouTube, Lagos, Nigeria, and see <laughs> all the best cars and the best houses and the beaches we have and wonderful things. And exactly. Me, yeah. I tell people when you come to America, you cannot be angry for everything. You have to be happy. You have to take opportunities and don't let things get to you. Mm -hmm. If someone calls you something crazy, that is not your name. Don't be offended. Mm -hmm. Keep moving. No stopping. And when you have that open mind of just coming here to, to learn, to be the best of you, to make to, to take your family from that level of, let's say, a, a middle class to the top class, you, you worry less about those little things that could put you off and keep looking towards the big picture. But when you see what is not good, what's not fair, call it out but when you see what you know you can teach people as an opportunity to for them to learn do that yeah. as well too uh, yeah that, that's just the way life is yeah absolutely well you've heard from my friends pam and udu we'll go on a short break now when we'll come out from the break we'll hear from them still and all the wonderful things they have to do in the future we'll be right back yeah. hi everybody welcome back from the short break i still have my friends pam and udu here guys hope you guys are still doing well yeah yep, yep 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 all good awesome all right so for any for someone that that have no idea of what to do to get the application started to study abroad what tips do you have to tell them who do you want to go first or pam anybody um what tips to tell them yes i i would say um, every school that you want to apply to has, obviously, they have a website and they have requirements that you need to fulfill in order to get that yeah. admission. So I would say, you know, go to the website, make sure you read through um, the requirements. And if, if you're able to meet those requirements, then apply to it. Um, I also suggest that you definitely speak to people who have either, if you have the the people that have attended that school, it's great to talk to them 
or you know anybody that's like myself or ego or Kamal, you can reach out to any of us and just yeah. ask questions on how to um what to expect um in the process of applying for this school or any other school that you want to apply to thank you yeah um me i would say like do your research um i remember going back a few years um when i was trying to apply um i had one school that um minnesota state university main kid i knew that i wanted to go to school here but i also applied for about three other school in minnesota just just because i wanted to be safe um i didn't know how the application process was going to go so i did apply for a few other schools just to be safe but not everybody has to do that like it says um just do your research and um, every school has an international center, a health center for like admission center. Um, just communicate to them, ask questions. Um, I know from a whole different country, it's sometimes hard to like make a quick phone call. Uh, it's international phone calls and things like that. So like you can always email with your questions and there's um, many people in their staff like only to help you. In my school, there are students um, like 24 seven, not 24 seven, like from eight to five, um, who are just um, assigned for prospective students to help. So yeah. don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, yeah, go through the application process. I know it's, uh, it's I it might be different now. I think um, when I was applying it, it was a, uh, oh, like you had to mail in documents and there was a lot of documents. And now I think, everything almost email. everything is online yes um yeah you can email the documents just have the documents ready um just be excited ask questions yeah. also i remember just like um minnesota like go into my facebook and search for like students who go to the same school um especially like sri lankans it doesn't have to be only sri lankans but um, I searched for like Sri Lankan students who were going to that school and I, I actually reached out to three of them and they were the one who came to pick me up from the airport and things like that. So like network um, is very um, important. And I know it's like, it's a little afraid to talk to a person that you've never seen or you don't even know, but just know that um, if somebody reached out to me or any international student who have been through the same experience, they would always be willing to help you out because they know how you must be feeling. They have been through the same situation and they've had people who help them. So don't be afraid to ask for help or ask questions, network, um, ask, yeah, things like that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with that. Also, I was gonna say, um, I know many countries have things like, you know, education advice and center. Um, that's where I went through when I was applying to school and those what that organization does is pretty much they they ask they just give you a guide of you know they help you interview questions um when you want to go to the embassy to get your visa um they help you to guide you so what they told me at first was you know apply to about 10 schools that's that's yeah. that was the first thing you know <laughs> apply to as much as much schools as you can and narrow down your list um based on what you can afford um or based on how much scholarship you get. That's another thing. You need to always look for scholarship as well. Yeah. Um, and so like, make sure you like go through those kind of organizations that help you, that can guide you to get in your admission. Um, yeah, that's, that's uh, just what I wanted to add to it. Awesome. Now, people always ask me, why did I choose the Midwest? Missouri. <laughs> now, the question I have for two, both of you, why did you guys choose, why did you choose Minnesota? Well, for me, I, I've heard from other people that Minnesota is like really a, like a good place to study, okay. which I didn't know was the how the weather and everything is going to be. <laughs> I actually, I knew there was going to be winters, but in Sri Lanka, we don't have a winter. We just get a little chilly and it's not like really hard or there's, there was never snow. I've never even seen snow before coming here. So I had no idea about it. Um, so yeah, coming here, it was like a total different world of like, I came in the spring semester where there was like a mm. big snowstorm. Yeah. So when I just stepped out of the airport, I was like, what is this place? Like I'm only seeing white yeah. and I've, <laughs> I've, I've never seen that before. So it was a, a, like a huge shock for me. 
So I, I would say for any student who's uh, planning to come here, Midwest, Midwest is, a, is a great place to study. Um, less distractions, I would say, maybe not. Um, but if you go to a state like, I don't know, California. Vegas. Or, um, like, yeah, um, it, it has a lot of things to do and a lot of different things. So it might be a little distracted, but not for maybe not for everybody but yeah. midwest is a great place but you have to just be aware of the weather um mm. if i can handle midwest weather um <laughs> from somebody who's never seen snow who's never been um experienced a winter i think anybody can um you just have to prepare for it um and just yeah learn as you go and experience things as you go and snow is not not that bad it's just <laughs> when you have to drive or if you have yes. to go outside that's what it's bad but other than that it's just it's a beautiful experience to see snow and everything nice. yeah um i think the reason why i chose well i like i said i applied to a, a lot of schools like about 10 schools i got admission into about five and somewhere like in texas um the midwest and yeah it was mostly like texas and the midwest and i the reason why i applied that was because i have families in those okay. states and um i narrowed down my list to the midwest simply because it was something i could afford my parents could afford for me and because of the scholarship that they offered me so that's why i stayed in the midwest so i'm talking about the weather <laughs> When I applied to the school, I, the first picture I saw on their website was Your snow. snow. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, I don't, I don't know about this, but I'll give it a try. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the first year I went to, that, like what Pamal said, was like a huge snowstorm. And that was the first time I experienced it. And I just want to say, like, the good thing about it is, you know, once you're wearing your coats or mostly all these buildings are connected like my school we had all the buildings connected so you don't necessarily have to go outside Ooh, nice. all the time and there's you know there's, there's there's a lot of like precaution for snow you know you gotta wear your your boots you can you can it is when you wear your, your jacket you got everything i think you'll be fine that's how i survived like pamal said if she was able to survive in the snow you can do it too so <laughs> yeah and also there's like a lot of help too like if you're like stuck somewhere and there's a big snowstorm and you didn't know about it um like our school had this um i think it was just like only four digits the phone number that you can call them and then they mm-hmm. are able to give you a ride and things like that and they always say like in the orientation when you're a new student don't go outside without a jacket on you can get frostbite and things like yeah. that even when you don't know what frostbite and how serious that could be, you're just still like, okay, th- th- that's what it is. Like, it's it's hard. So I shouldn't be going outside without a jacket and without gloves. And um, yep. yeah, and there's always like free bus services for students and transportation methods. So um, for school students, so you can always um, take use of them and not be like outside for too long, even though it's yeah. like pretty and beautiful. So things like that you have to just like learn and just pay attention to the details when you first come into the school and the orientation and all the books and the leaflets that you get sometimes you just kind of don't want to read them but um we we also have like peer mentors like students who um who are assigned to help new students so that way like you don't have to talk to like staff who are like intimidating or uh professors you can talk to just students who have been through the same experience just talk to another international student and ask them how was your first winter mm. things like that yeah well i'll, I'll tell you both the, the reason why i've not come to <laughs> minnesota is yeah. because of the snow if i'm trying i'm trying to to cope with the snow with the snow in missouri not compared to what you have over there so i wish you all the best no <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Oh. Even even this year, it didn't really even snow much at all. Okay. This okay. year was very light. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Keeps oh, yeah. Well, I, I know you both are gifted people with extraordinary skills. So, do you want to share? I know you've talked about it earlier on with dancing and music. Do you want to say something about your the, the passion you have outside school and outside work? Yeah, I'll let Udu go first. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um. Besides outside school and outside work um i do music i'm very passionate about music a lot i even have my you know 
I got my hey. stuff right here. Hey. <laughs> uh, so I have songs on different platforms, Spotify, YouTube, and all that. Um, my name is Udu over IT. And, you know, I have more songs coming out. I'm working on an album right now. So, nice. yeah, that's, that's something I'm very passionate about. Besides that, I also play basketball. It's just friendly basketball. And I play soccer. And, yeah, it's, it's typically it. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Come on. Yeah. Well, um, outside of school, well, for any student, um, they don't have to, if they're coming here, they don't have to only stick to education and classes and lectures and homeworks and assignments if they're passionate about like music or dancing or mm -hmm. sports and things like that you can always get involved in um school organizations not just dancing like any art um even there's like leadership activities that you can um involve in volunteer experience so there's a, like a lot of things that yep. um anybody can do outside of school any extracurricular activities um for me, I I don't like professionally do like Udu does, like I don't sing or anything, but I like to dance. Um, there's always like school performances, cultural events, um, international festivals and things like that. So I always like represent my country, uh, cultural dancing or do, um, our school has this free Zumba or dancing classes, which I go to, like it's very fun. Um, just to get my mind off all this, classes and homeworks it can be very stressful and very overwhelming and you at least need one thing that could like that's extra or that's like outside of the classroom yeah. um mm -hmm. I always like I always like to give back to the community so I volunteer um I've been volunteer with one uh, one of the organizations that helps little middle school girls to just um just be motivated in what they do and um, how to build their confidence and things like that. So yeah. I have been volunteering with them for like about three years now. It brings me so much happiness and satisfaction, um, things like that. Also, like there's a lot of, like I said, leadership organizations, which mm -hmm. um, Udu and I have both with, involved in so you can help other students to be vocal about their issues and yeah. um, just bring um, anybody's I don't know student issues to the table and talk about them and how we can solve those those kind of things it's a there's a lot of things that you can get involved in sports yeah, yeah I used to play chess but not anymore okay. so okay. yeah <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, like... she is really good at chess. Like, oh, well, then we have to play. We have to play some time. I love every, playing chess too. Everybody, including yeah. myself. Really? <laughs> okay. Yeah. To play some time. So. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Like I said, there's a lot of things that you can do outside of class, and you need it too. I I don't sure. think anybody can just be a robot and a machine only focus on school. So. Uh, I mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Now I I know, like you said, both of you have held powerful leadership positions. Mm -hmm. where you're in school and hopefully even while you're out now, what advice would you give anyone who wants to follow in the same footstep you followed to America? What advice would you give them? Um, I, I'll go. I think if you want to follow the same footsteps yeah. I did, um, I would strongly beg you to not be so dependent on yourself alone. Because okay. I, I was the kind of person that I felt like I could just do it by myself. Like I could, okay, research it by myself and, and figure things out by myself. It's kind of hard. Um, and I, it made me make those mistakes. I made so many mistakes that I should have been able to learn um, maybe from people without making those mistakes. And that, cost, that was costly because I, you know, I spent extra year in school and that's that's extra money <laughs> so it's i would advise you to definitely reach out to people that are in your same field ask them questions about how they got there um you know ask people who have even you know advanced so far and tell them how do i get an internship like yeah. because there's this in america you need experience a lot so from my first year, second year, I should have been, I should have already started thinking about internship or things like that. And I didn't know about that until my like fourth year. So um, it's good to ask questions and 
that will take you far. Leadership positions, I did those. Those are like experience. Those help you communicate with people a lot. So I took on lots of leadership experiences. I, I was a senator for my CSET. That's the College of Science and Engineering Technology. That built me a lot because I was able to speak to many students in that field. I was able to speak to the president of the school. I was able to communicate with many people and help students. So it helps you communicate more and it just builds you as a person so that you're going to need those skills for a job in the future. So I would advise you to definitely take up opportunities, take up volunteering experiences, um, do internships, you know, be part of groups and you just, just explore, explore. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. That's great advice. Um, I know this may sound like a, like a very simple thing, but I would say like make friends, meet new people, um, talk to people. At first, um, I personally didn't didn't feel like talking to that many people and you can ask Udu about it. I was always <laughs> just like holding myself back. Oh, I don't want to talk to anybody. I had to figure everything, um, everything out by myself. Um, I, I don't want to ask questions and like don't don't do that meet people make friends even even a stranger that like you you don't want to have like a long friendship or anything like that but just um, could be from a different country could be somebody who's working for um, on campus job and that's how I landed many opportunities network talk to many people, meet people, just be open-minded. Like you said, explore and get involved. Most most importantly, that would, I know it's gonna keep you very busy because you have classes and you have um, lectures and everything. And at the same time, you have this leaders, leadership position, school organization, that's gonna keep you very busy, but it, it's gonna help you a lot in the long run. And it's gonna, help you get a lot of opportunities, meet new people. And um, you, you unexpect, you, you can't even expect, like you don't know how it's gonna play out for you in the end. Um, so like meet people, meet new people, talk to people, network, explore, um, get involved most importantly, don't yeah. just stay home after class, just, just be in the student union area and just have lunch with somebody, just talk and, even just to let your feelings out. Oh, I miss home. I miss my mom. Things like that. Just don't keep everything to yourself. It's gonna. It's gonna be hard. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I'm gonna say also like when it comes to your career part, like the path. Um, if you're stuck, like you, for example, you're studying electrical engineering, like myself, that's what I did. Um, I would strongly advise you that when you're in classrooms, like you know be very collaborative speak out to people and you know have extra studies after you can just talk to somebody and you know you guys can go to the library and form a team mm -hmm. and and you know collaborate because that helps a lot because then you're getting ideas from everybody else and you're able to um, study properly um, so definitely while you're doing all the engagements with leadership and all the volunteering things definitely focus on the main thing which is your um, studies so that's that's what I'm gonna add to that. Well, thank you, Bota. You know, I tell people it's easy to get the A's here and the B's, but not the C's. Don't get the C's. C's are not good. No, we don't like C's. We like A's. Then if it's too bad, the B's. How we we do have homework and assignments every week. Once you get that weekly assignment done every week, by the end of the semester, you see you're, you're in a comfortable A, and it is easier to keep an A than to move from a B to an A during the end of the semester. Well. Please, Udu, yeah, go on. Honestly, if you do not do assignments, <laughs> oh my God. You, assignments you go. assignments save you a lot of stress, a lot. So you should definitely do your assignments, get those extra points because I at agree. the end of it, at the end of the semester, you might be, uh, you don't want to settle for C because C is a no. GPA killers. Mm, so Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. I would say like, don't, like if you know that in the middle of the semester, like you're not really doing Probably. good in a class, don't give up or don't be like, oh, I'm just going to fail this class. I can't yeah. do anything about it. Um, just talk to your professor and ask like um, if, he, if he could give you like an extra credit assignment. Because mm -hmm. there's been many times like me, myself or my friends, like we would go to a professor and ask for extra credit. Even though it's not in the syllabus, everybody 
goes as a group and like mm-hmm. oh nobody's doing good in this class everybody's yeah. grades are like a little low don't wait until like the finals to go ask mm. for a professor for an extra assignment that would um help you just build up your grade um i know there is um certain like in my school there we, we uh, everybody had this cultural contribution scholarship we had our gpa to maintain we had mm-hmm. our class credits and grades oh, yeah. everything to maintain so everybody was just like so focused on oh if i get a good grade then my i'm going to lose my scholarship and i have to pay a lot more than um any other international student would pay so it's it's a lot of stress stress too but don't wait until the last minute Yeah. and i know um in sri lanka we don't have a lot of assignments every every single day we have like exams um like every few weeks so that's how they test our knowledge or whatever but here we, you get quizzes and you get assignments you get midterms you get finals so and your final grade is just a mixture of everything so don't, don't just be like oh I, even if i don't do this assignment i'm going to do great in my midterm and that's going to save me it's not going to save you so you have to do all the assignments and homework and even let's say you missed an assignment talk to your professor talk to your ta talk mm-hmm. to your um recent assistant like somebody that could really help oh can i i was sick can i get this deadline is um extended always talk and just communicate it there's no harm in trying True. to get this like sometimes you might not end up getting what you expect but there's no harm in trying to communicate well i agree i agree so to end on a light note skydiving <laughs> or deep sea diving like you notes. prefer <laughs> that's not a light note <laughs> <laughs> that's a heavy note here yeah? <laughs> yeah yeah so what, what do you think skydiving or, or or deep sea diving come on you go I would say skydiving. Okay. Um, not because I'm I'm very afraid of heights. Okay. But um but I'm also um I like Sri Lanka is an island so it we like surrounded with like ocean and I grew up seeing the beach every single day. Ooh, that, that's that's I lovely though. So close to the beach. Yeah. And um I kind of grew up like being afraid of I don't know how to swim. Okay. <laughs> so my I grew up being afraid of the water. I I always felt like it's a lot that could just like eat us up or like <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So um I would definitely pick skydiving. Not that I'm very like uh interested in heights, mm-hmm. but when it comes to those two I would pick skydiving, which nice. I kind of want to do someday, you know. Right. Try. Okay. <laughs> okay, do what do you think? Huh. skydiving is on my bucket list but huh that's going to take a long time before i do it right so because <laughs> i'm afraid of heights like Same. i don't know like it's 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 i could what i could be watching the video from the screen and i can feel the, the tension in my feet just by watching somebody from just way high there and mm-hmm. i can, i don't know if i could do that but i i'd rather do the um deep diving yeah Um, I swim so I think that's actually I I I always wanted to do something like that. Um, I know in Spain they have this this like I always want to go to Spain to like do those deep diving thing and like see all the creatures down there in the sea. It's beautiful so that's something I want to do. Well, both of you are lucky. I am caught in the middle of the two. I fear for heights. <laughs> Imagine when, when the plane is flying taking off from the ground. I hold my seat so tight. <laughs> I cannot think of being up there and opening the door and jumping down never oh, never happened. Oh my god. Then again, I cannot swim, so I am torn in between the two. I don't have I don't know what to do, but we'll so see. So what would you pick? What would you pick if you had to? Oof. I, I think I'll pick the what the, the the deep sea diving honestly deep because diving. I, I am okay. so scared of heights. Heights is so oh, bad man. for me, so I'll, I'll I'll pick the deep sea diving. Anyways, guys, thank you so much. It's been wonderful having both of you here on the podcast. You all see why I brought them there. They're very, they're very good friends of mine. They are absolutely a wealth of wisdom and they know what they do. They they are they're experts in their own trade. So thank you guys so much. I'm grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank yeah, you for having me. I oh. really appreciate what you're doing um to just to help people, to help students. Um that that's a, that's a great thing. Um I wish you all the very best thank for you. many many podcasts that would help right. everybody. So Thank um, thanks for having us and um, 
Yeah. Yeah, this is this is a very good cause. So it's it's really helpful to people. I if I had something like this when I came to the US the first time, being the first child of a family, I came here not knowing anything. Yeah. You know, it's like it would have been nice to hear from somebody like mm -hmm. like what you're doing. This is going to be very helpful to a lot of people. So this is this is a good job. Yeah, shout thank out, you. Shout out to you, Eagle. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much. Well, Oops. guys, don't forget to please be safe out there. Don't forget to follow us on all our social media handle at I Go With Eagle. And please, when it's your turn to get the vaccine, please go get the vaccine. I've had mine already. So, so can one day gather together, hang out, eat out again, uh, you know, and just have a good time. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah, I have my second dose next week. Yeah, nice. next week. Mine too. <laughs> mine too. Well, stay safe, everybody. Thank you so much.